Hello there, uh, I'm Laura and I wanted to go over today something that I'm hearing a lot lately and I keep saying please be careful, don't listen to that, which is uh, making the wrong offers on whatever you want to do, wholesaling, fix and flip or buy and hold. And there is a lot of misconception there and I'm not sure who started talking about this in the past with a lot of you have heard the rule of 70 or in some cases, and I even said the rule of 65, which is basically they say you should offer 70% of the uh, property, what you plan on selling the property for to the seller. Now, let me say that this rule is very wrong and I never ever used this rule in 34 years in this business. And, uh, and also it's very misleading because if we take a 70% of 100,000, is a much different 70% than 300,000. So if you're dealing in an area where there are $300,000 home and you're offering 70%, that would be 210,000. Now, how many sellers you think, in this, especially in this market, will accept a discount of $90,000? You know, you as seller, I have some of my students telling me, they had sellers telling them, I would prefer letting my house go in foreclosure than feeling like I've been taken advantage of and selling it at such a high discount. And, uh, and the, like I said, 70% of 300,000 is $90,000 discount compared to 70% of 100,000, which is a 30,000. So, but regardless, this is the wrong rule to use. So then you might ask him, so what should I do? What rules should I use when I'm making an offer? Uh, very simple. If you're wholesaling, you need, you need to keep in the back of your mind that you want to make at least about $10,000 profit on a deal, right? So if the seller, uh, let's say this property 300,000 and, and the market is hot and you've seen the area, nothing really stays on the market that long. At the end of the day, even if you offer 280, 285 and sold the property at 290, 295, you make your 10,000 and it's below whatever the market is for that property, right? So the thing is at the end of the day, you make a profit, you make your 10,000. Even if technically, if you offer 280, that's more than 90% of whatever the price is or the value is for the property. So you see, you see how this is, it could throw you off, you know, because I think most of us as a wholesaler want to do consistent deals, right? We want to do deals all the time. We don't want to do a big hit once in a while. Yeah. Once in a while you might find a seller that's willing to come down 30%, but really this may be once in a long while. In the meantime, you have a drought, you don't do any deals. So I prefer taking a lot of 10 to $20,000 deals than making a big deal of 50,000 once in a while, right? So for wholesaling, you want to make at least $10,000 profit. For fix and flip, I'm looking to make 10 to 15% of the after repair value. So if I think I'm going to sell this property after the repair for 300,000, I want my profit to be at least 30,000 to $50,000, right? 10 to 15%. So when I calculate what offer to make, I will take the after repair value and I'll subtract all the expenses, all the holding costs, financing costs if I'm borrowing the money, commission if I'm using an agent to sell it, and my 10 to 15% profit. And then I come up with the, my maximum allowable offer and that's what I'm gonna write the contract for, okay? Now for buy and hold, again, buy and hold is rentals. So that to me is a uh, function of how much rent I'm gonna get on this property, how much cash flow. So my goal is to get a cash flow of at least $250, $300 per door. So if it's a single family, I want, you know, single family, honestly, I want about three to $400 per door. If it's a duplex, I'll take 500, right? 250 per door. If it's a four family, I'll take a thousand and so forth. So with that said, what I do, I take the monthly rental income and I subtract all the expenses, insurance, taxes, mortgage, principal interest, and also maintenance and, uh, you know, HOA, if you have HOA, make sure you take all your fees off plus your profit because, you know, let's say it's a duplex, you want to make $500 and that will give me an amount the most I will pay. So if I want to calculate amount and maximum I will um, offer on that particular property. What I do is I take the rental income, take off taxes, insurance, maintenance, HOAs, and my profit every month. And then whatever pay, whatever amount is left, that was what is allowed. I allow that for mortgage payment. 
So let's say that I have $400 left after the early expenses. Then I go to a mortgage calculator and calculate what it will support a mortgage of. So if it tells me that will support a mortgage of 100,000 every month, then I know that, you know, I can buy the property maybe for 120 because there is a down payment and 100,000 and then that would cash flow for me the way I want it to cash flow, right? So that's the calculation. So be very careful when you make any type of offers that you don't arbitrarily choose the rule of 70 for everything because that's not the correct rule. That's not really your goal as an investor to use that type of rules. You need to be a little bit more, um, you know, liberal about making offer depending on the strategy and depending on your goals. So to summarize, you wanna make at least $10,000 as a wholesaler on each deal. You want to make at least 10 to 15 percent on a fix and flip, 10 15 percent of the after repair value, and you want to make at least 250 dollars per door as a landlord. That's it. Everything else to me is a function of making sure I get those numbers. So I'm not going to offer 70 percent across the board. That's false. Don't do it. You're going to lose most of your deals, especially in this market. You're not going to do it deals. You're going to get frustrated and then say, oh, you know, you know, this business doesn't work or it's not for me. And it's not true. It's because you're using something that people have been talking about that is not right. But any seasoned real estate investor will tell you, look at the deal itself, how the numbers look. And as long as your numbers work for your profit, you want to make, you are doing right. Okay, so forget percentages and crazy formulas. All I wanted to share with you today, because I really want to make sure that this uh, misconception is not going to stop you on your tracks before you even get started in the business. And, um, and, that, and, and that's the thing I want to share with you. I'm seeing a comment here that says, this is very true. The problem for me is finding the right buyers. That's another story uh, with the buyers. You really have to educate them what is coming up in this market. And that's a, probably another video that I'll be doing. So stay tuned. Thanks for the idea, Catherine. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody, for being here. And uh, watch this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend.